Uh, <laughs> Let's unforgiving Ross Abian Desert. Good morning, welcome to Cool Outdoors. I'm your host, Brandon Scott, and with me is Nash. So, this morning's adventure, we are out in the middle of the desert, far from home on a random ass Friday in February. We're Why? Lost. We're a little lost. Why? Well, we're hoping to go see a metric butt ton of bald eagles, and you know, we need to come out to the desert more. That's obvious. So, we're in Steamboat Rock State Park, just south of Grand Coulee Dam. It was a four hour drive this morning. We're here pretty much right at sunrise, hoping to catch most of the eagles still in bed. There were a couple on the frozen lake already starting to fish, but there's supposed to be hundreds of eagles. Hundo. Hundos. Exactly 100 eagles. Plural hundo. Anywho, so we're at Northrop Canyon. Gonna go do the Northrop Canyon Trail. If we go all the way to Northrop Lake, which we are gonna go all the way to Northrop Lake, it'll be about a six mile round trip hike. All three of my desert hiking books have this hike in them because it's one of the better hikes, no matter what time of year you come through. So Northrop Canyon is one of the only canyons that has perennial water and good native east side forest in it still. There aren't many canyons that have good thick ponderosa and fir and some cedars in the forest. And it's got Northrop Creek runs pretty much all year round, so it's reliable water. So yeah, you can come do that in the spring and the fall when stuff is flowering out. We might come do it in the spring and the fall because I mean, Steamboat Rock is literally right over there. We're gonna go do that. I'll post that right there if when we go do it. But uh, yeah, we're here in the winter to try and catch the bald eagles and it's gonna be a about 50 degree and clear day as soon as these clouds stop burning off. I'll show you. So day hiking Eastern Washington, best desert hikes Washington and 55 hikes Central Washington all have it. They also talk about the wagon road, which is here too. So there's multiple things to come do here in Northrop Canyon and also multiple things to come do in Steamboat Rock State Park. So Northrop Canyon, six miles, not really hard to do. You gain about 700 feet um, year round. So we're starting down here at the trailhead, just on the left side of the page is Banks Lake and just off to the page would be Steamboat Rock. We go up Northrop Canyon, about halfway up we'll get to the old Northrop Homestead and then we'll go all the way up to Northrop Lake. Again, you're walking through one of the few desert canyons in eastern Washington that is actually forested and if you come back in the springtime you'll get to see the aspens and everything else because it is a nice wet canyon but hopefully we're going to go sneak up on some bald eagles and hopefully I'll get a wildlife watching long exposure of it if not we'll come down eventually we'll come down after going to Northrop Lake hopefully go up to the top of Gibraltar Rock and then go out to Northrop Point and go hang out and go do there having a full day in the desert because the snow sucks this winter we'll get to see some owls too Gated Road, Happy Clank, Poopin' Station, which is open. Up the canyon we go. Sun's coming out. So I believe this road, you used to be able to drive up this road all the way up to the homestead until, I don't think that long ago. So this used to only be like a mile and a half hike instead of a three mile hike, but that's obviously no longer. So that back over there is Gibraltar Rock, which I think there's a unofficial side trail, or maybe not so unofficial side trail. That kind of looks like a trail going up Gibraltar Rock right there. So we'll probably do that on our way back when the sun gets a little higher in the sky. But we're just going up Northrop Canyon all the way to the lake and the homestead. Yeah, and then this little junction here is going to be the old wagon road trail, which next time we're up this way, we'll probably go do that, but they want people to not go up the wagon road trail while the bald eagles are roosting here in the winter because it goes and weaves through the best spots. Yeah, close November 15th through March 15th to protect bald eagle roosting habitat. So you'll be able to see them from this trail, but the old wagon road trail goes right through where they all sleep and they don't want you going through there, obviously to disturb them from their sleeping. So we'll probably come back, I don't know, springtime-ish when all the flowers are out and do that and sometime and I'll post that right there. 
Now we're just gonna go cruise up north through Canyon. Look at all those aspen trees down there. Oh yeah. And the wagon road does go all the way up to the rim of the canyon and it's its own two or three mile one way walk. So it is worth doing on its own day. But that is going to be Northrop Canyon. Yeah, and that's Gibraltar Rock over there. This is gonna be good. Better get a short before I forget about it. Starting down the Northrop Canyon Trail in eastern Washington along the shores of Banks Lake near Grand Coulee Dam. There's a refuse pile from a CCC camp off to our left. Goes click, goes click. I can hear Northrop Creek now too. Raven, look at all the tin cans left over from. Yep. This is the refuse pile from a Civilian Conservation Corps camp in the 1930s when they built Grand Coulee Dam, which is only yeah, which is only a couple miles further up the highway. Grand Coulee Dam, one of the biggest dams the U.S. has ever built, holds back a metric butt ton of water, also known as Lake Roosevelt, on the Columbia River which is the gateway to northern Washington. But we will go explore hopefully northern Washington and the Pasatan Wilderness here actually this summer. Maybe, hopefully. Again, so much stuff to go see and do. We're not quite to the uh, homestead yet, but I figured I'd turn the camera on and let you oogle at this. Um, the wagon road goes up. You can kind of see the nice straight line going up and then it tucks in over there and rims out over there. But all that rock, that lower lump of rock there, that's all granite. We're on the very ragged northern edge of the flood basalt. <laughs> You've got 16 to 12 million year old basalt sitting on top of much, much, much older granites. Oh, the camera does not like the sun trying to poke over. This is very shadowy. Oh well, you just have to deal with it. It looks really pretty. I promise you. This might be the old property line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're a mile in and you got half a mile left to get to the homestead. So, uh, yeah, we shall see. Come on, camera, pick this up better. It's so pretty. Hopefully the sun gets higher up in the sky and when we come back and we can see this better because it's really dang pretty. It's dead quiet and calm. You occasionally hear a songbird, but that's about it. But look at that freaking wall, dude. That is so cool. Oh, I see buildings, or at least I see roofs. So, I haven't seen much in the eagles. Either they're further up the canyon or we already missed out on them. Might have already missed out on them. Oh well. That's not the main homestead, I don't think. It's probably just some outbuildings. 
no idea about that was. Yeah, go find the treasure. Looks like some old chicken coops. But those white splotches on the basalt boulders in front of us, yeah. that's where the eagles are sleeping and pooping each night. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty damn good. That's a pretty good. I believe we're too late in the morning already to see the eagles. They've all dipped out for the morning to go hunting, so missed out on that, but oh well. I do hear a noisy creek running in between all these basalt boulders. Down in amongst the boulders running in there. That would be a hella cool set of couple of bouldering routes in there. Somebody's gotta come out here at some point and put some routes down. You just think. Oh wow, that's pretty. Yeah, see, so you got that rock is basalt, and all this is granite. It's the fine line. Look at how much smoother that granite is. Yeah, that is sweet. Little desert oasis. Be cool to get a short, long exposure of that in the springtime when everything's all green. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Came out and put some serious work on the trail shortly. All nice and frosty. Oh yeah, come back in like April or May when everything's all green and grown yeah and everything's all nice and green and growing and i bet there's tons of birds hanging out in all this brush yeah deploy sunnies <laughs> that's gorgeous oh the sunshine feels so damn good so yes if you ever get tired of that might be an eagle flying right there. It's way out in the distance, but. So if you ever get tired of walking on the wet side of the mountains of Washington, you can always come out to the desert and have some fun, which we are severely neglecting the desert of Washington. We know it's there, we know it exists. We just, you know, don't, out, don't come out here enough. Go on, get for possible thumbnail. Will you even be able to see him, YouTube? Oh yeah. I'm in the sun, you better see me. Well, you're in all black with shadows behind you. Approaching the homestead. It's also where the creek and canyon splits in two. Sounds like the main portion of water goes up that way, which is also the, I believe, where the wagon road ends up, up on top over there. But the actual homestead buildings is right here, which is pretty cool. That's a two story house, too. That's cool. multiple houses here 
Looks like some sort of granary or grain silo sitting here too. And hopefully the camera will be able to pick up enough of it once we get out of this brush that the video will be good enough and stable enough to get a thumbnail and a title screen. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Not sure how old, oh, there's even more buildings. Not sure how old the original homestead is. I was, you know, of course, not smart enough to look up and remember that portion, but it's a pretty happening place. There's a house over there, or a barn over there. Looks like another building in the hillside over there. Probably the main homestead there. And then a couple of secondary houses. It was around long enough to even get power as evidenced by the power pole here. Yeah, that's probably the uh, drying rack up there on the hill behind the main white house for drying meat. Pretty sick. Yeah. Some sort of Can outbuilding. I mean, don't see why not. Let's go find some treasure. That was dad. What kind of treasure are you going to bring me home? I'm not going to bring nothing home. It's a freaking state park. Besides, I'm sure it's been, huh? Shocking. Besides, I'm sure it's been picked over of anything good long ago. Chicken coop, maybe? Yeah, it looks like it. It's got light and everything, too. You see some straw in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... Now, the danger of this is there might be cr critters living in here somewhere. Some sort of storage building. Uh huh. So it looks like the main trail continues off to the left, which we'll go hit eventually, but we gotta wander around for a little bit and get that juicy, juicy content. And because of our curiosity, it's all gonna be good shots. <laughs> Welcome to the desert canyons of eastern Washington. It's cool as shit for a whole different set of reasons than wandering in the mountains of western Washington. Yeah, I mean, it's technically a condemned house. I wouldn't want to be. I'm betting there's a back entrance. Oh, there's a bottom. It might be blocked off. It was a padlock, but some dickheads come through and bonked it. Yeah. Look at that. It's even had modern insulation in here and a stove range. And a modern, semi-modern HVAC system in there. With it being the dead of winter, I don't want to disturb any possibly sleeping bears, so we're not going to go any further. <laughs> but see, when it said homestead, I was expecting buildings of like that vintage. I wasn't expecting something that looks like it was built in the 1970s. That's cool. Surprising and cool. And then that leaning over building up there is the old meat drying rack. So, you want to go? We'll go look over here real quick. See what it is, and then we'll continue heading up the trail towards Northrop Lake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Supposedly, there's an orchard up here, too, somewhere. Yeah. Big basalt walls, baby. 
That's what we got used to seeing. That might be the thumbnail. Actually, that will be the thumbnail when we come back down when you're walking down here. That'll be the title screen. The walking up, the approach will be the good one for the actual bit. But walking back down here to the homestead will probably be the title screen thumbnail. It's all on the side. Yeah. There's some eagle footprints in the mud over here. This looks like the actual barn and such in here. Oh, slippery. Yeah. That would be the barn and probably the original homestead house. That's hewn logs there. So, yeah. Cool. All right, I guess we'll continue on up the trail. All right. Oh, yeah, well, here's a fruit tree right here. Oh, you're right in front of us. Well, I mean, it is the dead of winter. Yeah. Still pretty distinct, though. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, thumbnail, done. Multiple spots. Well, the video will be coming up. That's just gonna be the screenshot. Yeah. All right, I guess we'll go past this other outbuilding over here and continue on up the trail towards Northrop Lake. Yeah, but again, a nice concrete patio. It's a hop in place. Where the party's at. Yeah. So we come do mushrooms. Yeah. Kitchen as you walk in. Steep steps. Yeah. Well, I mean, all old houses are steep steps like yeah. that. This would be the main living quarters. That's not a bad view. Mm -hmm. Not bad. And then the sunroom right there. That's pretty damn good. That is That's some horror movie shit right there. Panning back out of the window like that. Someone really like to punch walls in here. You know, hooligan children. Bunch of Kyle's with their monster things. Dude, it almost looks like there's a light on in here with the sun reflecting. Bathroom tub. Yeah, man, that's pretty cool. HVAC fence. I mean, this was a modern house. Yeah. This was a pretty modern household. Baseboard heating. That's cool. Bird flying out there. Bird? Yeah. He's standing on the side. He's right behind those trees. There he is. Oh, yeah. Looks like a hawk or an owl circling, looking for grub. I don't guess a red tail. Red tails are a lot darker than that. Ah, oh, we landed behind the tree. Oh well. All right, let's enough dilly dallying. Not that this wasn't good. This is one of the highlights of the actual trail. One of the reasons we come up the trail, but we still got a lake to go check out. Nice to pick a nick table. Pretty good view too. Oh, it's flying back up high again. It's circling around that might be an owl because it's got white in the middle white in the middle yeah, it looks like it's got white right where the base of the tail is it might be a barred owl then i have no idea what a cooper's hawk look like it could be a cooper's hawk but, oh well let's continue next stop yeah. Yeah, this would be the 
more modern livestock barn. Yes, it is. It's wet and frozen. Trail's starting to get a little more technical there, bud. Gotta saunter through all this granite. Nash is cutting trail. <laughs> Ravens have a roost over there. There's a crack right there on that back end of that rock face. And that's where they've been chattering and coming in and out of. Yeah. It's crazy how completely different the character of the trail is above the homestead. This drainage doesn't have perennial flow. All the water went up the other branch. Hi. What's that? Might be. There's enough forest in here. Oh yeah, they're chickadees. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm warm, but I don't want to take my vest off. Yeah, here's Oliver in the last frickin' mile. Yeah, I think if I was reading it on one of the books, it gave the actual split and it was like 300 feet to the homestead. Whoa, look at the uh, layers in the basalt wall over there. This is why we need to come out to the desert more. This is just so freaking cool. Now see, if there wasn't a homestead, this would probably be the thumbnail right in here. Yeah. But, you know, there was something cooler to look at, so. <sighs> <laughs> Getting warm. Yeah, I know I'm about ready to lose my vest and give up on it. I could get rid of my fleece and just rock the uh, pink shirt with the vest over it. Oh, oh yeah. I got turquoise on. Oh yeah, that's. The rain shadow ain't all just boring bland sage flats, which they themselves are also fun to saunter through, but you can find some really good stuff. Yeah, except for the rocks are all frosted over and deathly. You stepped on some squirrel's favorite spot. If it's this lively and cool in the middle of February, just imagine when spring rolls around in April, yeah. how nice it'll be out here. All the flowers will be out, 20 degrees warmer. And of course, I am again too slow to get my phone out to get good pictures and ask before he gets his phone out. So we'll wait for him to put, nope, turn back around. Uh. There we go. All right. Now we can continue along the trail. <clears throat> oh, gross.
gross, sorry. I'm afraid to turn the camera off for what else we might see. That happens on a lot of hikes. I'm like, well, do I turn the camera off now or what's gonna be around the corner? Have the fear of missing out. Yeah. But then equally, when I go to crunch the videos, I have the fear of deleting or anything too. But try to keep the videos around 45 minutes or so. The Baker Lake video had an hour and seven minutes of video. <laughs> Crunched it down to 51 minutes and that was about as good as I could do. Oh, that, that was, I cut out a little bit of our off trail adventure and I cut out about half of walking back. The beach with you, me and dad is gonna be its own separate video and that's 35 minutes long. So, you know, content for days. Yeah, I'm hoping so also. I could cheat and look at my uh, map and see. Too late. Um, we're at 2069. We're still 100 feet below the level of the lake. <laughs> so, huh? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, we've just got to climb to the lake. We're not going to get, I mean, we'll get views, but we're not going to get amazing views. So, yep. We have just passed the three mile little flasher that the state park put down and lo and behold, I can see a ice rimmed lake through the reeds and the cattails. So eventually, I'm assuming this trail is gonna plop us down to the lake and we will hopefully find a spot in the sun to relax in and I will set up the camera somewhere to take a long exposure of the lake. And I'll post that right, oh, that was terrible. There, ooh, rock, rock overlook. Ooh, pretty, 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 pretty. Well, there's sunny spots, but it's all in the reeds. Nope. We'll just have to make do. Yeah. No. Probably going to be about as good of a spot as any. Yeah. I know. I got to find a decent spot to. Before you put the GoPro right there. Yeah, I was thinking of sitting there, but yeah. There's just a little too much vegetation near the lake. I'd like to put the GoPro like up there, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. Welcome to Northrop Lake. Sat here for an hour, exactly an hour. Sick! 11 o'clock, we're gonna start heading back down, take one last good look at Northrop Lake in the dead of winter. We'll have to come back at some point in the springtime or in the fall when everything's all pretty and either green or turning colors and enjoy it, but post that right there if we do. Otherwise, back up is the trail we go. Technically, it's almost all downhill, but. So yeah, the plan is going to be still, when we get back to Clank, we'll go up the little side trail up to the top of Gibraltar Rock. 
And then we'll be done with this, and then we'll go across the highway to Northrop Point where there's a picnic area and a boat launch and have our lunch there and then go explore around that for a little bit. And that'll probably be it for the day. Save Steamboat Rock and some other things around here for Aza Adventures in the Desert. Yeah. Look at how beautiful it is. Now that there's more sunshine, it can be better short to take. Quick, Nash, climb one of these boulders. Yeah. <laughs> too, much <laughs> too much effort, he oh, says. Yeah, huh? Find one. Right there. Oh, find it, okay. Yeah, almost. Sunshine feels good. Me enjoy sunshine. Coming back down into the homestead, which means we're done with the uh, upper mile and a half of the Northrop Canyon Trail. Look at how different it looks when the sun gets a couple hours higher in the sky. The wall ain't so orange anymore. It's back to it being itself a basalt brown. But you can actually see things now because the sun's not just barely peeking over the wall creating tons of glare. Onto the rock we go. They so pretty. Your. Here. 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 Take a picture of Homestead in the sunshine. Here. That works. Am I going first? You going first? You go first. Okay. Mud. Oh, getting a little muddy, a little swampy now that it's thawed out. It's all thawed out. Uh, I was going to try and turn around and take video of you walking away. There we go. Video of me slipping all the way. Yeah, pretty much. 
That might be the thumbnail though. Camera's fairly stable. You're still in the frame. Oh, it's gonna turn out great. So, somewhere in there might be a decent thumbnail, hopefully. We'll just have to check and find out. Some of these videos end up taking like four thumbnail sh bits, and it's hard to decide which one to use. Oh, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's like I end up taking like four or five. I end up taking like 80 pictures and then delete like 30 of them. Yep. Rather have them and then get rid of them than not have them to begin with. I think the freaking water comes on that side of the rock. It looks like there's a little gorge or something in there. Yeah. I can see some water dripping over there, but I don't think that, well, it might come well, through there where those right, aspens right there, are. It's probably going that way. Yeah, probably actually. So we got a little ways to go to the uh, vehicle and the trailhead yet. And we're also gonna go do Gibraltar Rock, but this is the last really pretty spot. So I figured, why well, get a look at this nice thousand foot tall basalt cliff, I'll uh, run the outro. Thank you for joining us on this coolie outdoors desert adventure where for once we actually go up into a coolie as what our name implies. Um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, Give it a thumbs down. Either way, please write in the comments down below what you did or did not like about it so that I can improve it for next time. Ratings. Accessibility. It is a four hour drive from Seattle, but it is all pavement. So as long as you can get over the pass, you should be able to get in. So I'll give it two stars. Oh, the pickup stopped. Ah. Uh, Difficulty, not really, two stars. Neither very long and there's only a couple of steep sections, so two stars. And enjoyment, I mean, if we would've got here early enough to see all the roosting bald eagles, it'd have been an easy five star, but still we gotta see a homestead, go to a frozen over lake tucked deep in the desert canyon. And it was a really pretty hike in itself. I'm gonna give it a three and a half probably. Yeah, same, same. So uh, after I kill the camera, the next time it comes on, will be a little bit of bonus content going up to the top of Gibraltar Rock. And then we will go hang out at uh, Northrop Point, I believe, picnic area, boat launch, scope out if it's a good boat launch to launch our kayaks and go uh, oogle at Steamboat Rock for a bit, get some long exposure of that. And then next time we come out here, we can go climb to the top of Steamboat Rock and or go kayaking. Or both. Think, <laughs> or both, depending on how much time we have. Um, thank you for joining us. We will uh, see you next time and ciao. Bye-bye.